Hare Krishna. I'm going to continue reading in the Chaitanya Shikshamrita by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And this is uh, chapter one, part two. And um, it's entitled The Teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gorvani Pacharani Nirvisesa Sunyavani Paskitari Satarani In order to understand the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, we must refer to the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Lord Chaitanya himself did not leave any written works except the eight verses of the Shikshastika. There are few verses attributed to him in the Padyavali, but from those verses we cannot take any systematic instructions. There is also a few very small books which some people claim were written by Lord Chaitanya. After examining everything, we must conclude that these are all false claims. From the many works which the Goswamis wrote, we can thoroughly understand Lord Chaitanya's teachings, but they do not mention any works written by Lord Chaitanya himself. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita is the authoritative work. From this work, we can understand the Lord's character and teachings. These teachings are confirmed perfectly by the words of the Goswamis. For this reason, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita is given so much respect. Sri Krishnadas Kaviraj appeared immediately after Lord Chaitanya. Mahaprabhu's direct disciples, Raghunath Goswami, Rupa Goswami, and many others, assisted Krishnadas in writing his work. Before him, Kavi Karnapur had written Sri Chaitanya Chandra Dayanatika, and Vrindavan Dastakur had written Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. These works were a great help to Krishnadas Kaviraj. Considering all points, we have had to depend upon Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. During his married life, until the age of 24, Chaitanya would preach the glories of the Holy Name and the necessity of chanting the Lord's Name to all souls in Srivasa's courtyard, on the bank of the Ganges, in his classroom, and on the road. After taking sannyas, the Lord instructed Sarvabhoma in Puri Ramananda Roy in Vijayanagara, Vain Katabat in the south, and Rupa Goswami as well as Raghupati Upadhyaya and Vallavabhata by trickery in Prayag, and Sanatan Goswami and Prakasananda in Varanasi. From these instructions, we can understand Lord Chaitanya's teachings as they are in truth. After going through all these teachings, the principal points of his philosophy have been presented here. Displaying extraordinary mercy to the living entities, Mahaprabhu preached pure Vaishnav dharm or jive dharm all over India. He himself went to some places and preached. To other places, he sent preachers to do the work giving the preachers unlimited spiritual power. He sent them out to all places, and impelled by the prema he has bestowed on them, they took up the task without expectation of pay or reward, for only a preacher of pure heart can preach the pure dharm. In the present age, in various religions, people preach to earn a living. This, however, cannot give the intended result. In Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila, seventh chapter, it is written Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates of the Panchatattva distributed the holy name of the Lord 
to invoke love of Godhead throughout the universe, and thus the entire universe was thankful. Lord Chaitanya dispatched the two generals, Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami, to Vrindavan to preach the Bhakti cult. As Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami were sent toward Mathura, so Nityananda Prabhu was sent to Bengal to preach extensively the cult of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally went to South India. He broadcast the holy name of Lord Krishna in every village and town. Thus the Lord went to the southernmost tip of the Indian Palinsa, known as Setubanda. Everywhere he distributed the bhakti cult and love of Krishna, and in this way he delivered everyone. Mahaprabhu taught in essence that the eternal function of the living entity is Krishna praying. The living entity can never be separated from his dharma. However, as a result of forgetfulness of Krishna, being deluded by maya, <clears throat> the living entity has attraction for other things and the dharma is almost lost. It has become concealed within the living entity. <clears throat> Thus the living entity falls into material misery. If the living entity again by good fortune remembers that he is the eternal servant of Krishna, then this dharma again appears and the living entity becomes healthy. Faith in this truth is the root of all success. Faith appears in two ways. Some people develop faith after developing a taste for the material world, a distaste, excuse me, I'll try that again. Some people develop faith after developing a distaste for the material world after many births of Sukriti. If by good fortune a living entity develops faith in Krishna, he begins to associate with devotees. Another name for Shraddha is Vishva. By rendering transcendental loving service to Krishna, one automatically performs all subsidiary activities. This confident, firm faith favorable to the discharge of devotional service is called Shraddha. Faith means that by worshiping Krishna, all the living entities' duties are accomplished. After performance of Sukriti, the soul becomes satisfied. And from the eternal function of the soul, this natural Shraddha appears. The person who has developed faith by practicing devotional activities in the association of devotees destroys his material attachments, gradually progresses through the stages of steadiness, taste, attachment, bhav, and pray. If the natural, intrinsic faith appears in an intense way, the devotee practices ragamag. Not considering so much the rules of scripture, he can fearlessly progress in his practice on the path of intense attraction to Krishna. However, if the faith which has developed is weak, then the devotee must progress by taking the help of good advice from the authorized guru. As this faith usually starts from faith in the scripture and the instruction of the guru, normally the guidance of scripture is very essential. My dear sir, kindly hear the reason. My spiritual master considered me a fool and therefore he chastised me. You're a fool, he said. You are not qualified to study Vedanta philosophy, and therefore you must always chant the holy name of Krishna. This is the essence of all mantras of Vedic hymns. Simply by chanting the holy name of Krishna, one can attain freedom from material existence. Indeed, simply by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, one will be able to see the lotus feet of the Lord. In this age of Kali, there's no other religious principle than the chanting of the holy name, which is the essence of all Vedic hymns. 
This is the purport of all scriptures. And after describing the potency of the Hare Krishna mantra, my spiritual master taught me another verse, advising me to always keep the name within my throat. In this age of Kali, there's no alternative. There's no alternative. There's no alternative for spiritual progress than the holy name, the holy name, the holy name of the Lord. Since I received this order from my spiritual master, I always chant the holy name. But I think that by chanting and chanting the holy name, I have been bewildered. While chanting the holy name of the Lord in pure ecstasy, I lose myself. I laugh, I cry, I dance, I sing like a madman. Collecting my patience, therefore, I began to consider that chanting the holy name of Krishna had covered my spiritual knowledge. I saw I had become mad by chanting the holy name, and I immediately submitted this at the lotus feet of my spiritual master. My dear Lord, what kind of mantra have you given me? I become mad simply by chanting this mantra. Chanting the holy name in ecstasy causes one to dance, laugh, cry. When my spiritual master heard this, he smiled and began to speak. It's the nature of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra that anyone who chants it immediately develops as loving ecstasy for Krishna. Religiosity, economic development, sense gratification, and liberation are known as the four goals of life. But before love of Godhead, the fifth and highest goal, these appear as insignificant as straw in the street. From these words, consider this verse and keep it around your neck. We can understand that faith is nourished and grows by following scripture. According to Mahaprabhu, Scripture, our Vedic scripture, is the only authoritative proof. Rules of logic and argument are not proof. Self-evident Vedic literatures are the highest evidence of all. The conditioned soul cannot revive his Krishna consciousness by his own effort. But out of causeless mercy, Lord Krishna compiled the Vedic literature and its supplements, Puranas. It is clear that there are two types of faith, Kamala Shraddha, weak faith, and Dhrita Shraddha, firm faith. Bhakti that arises from firm faith is very strong and naturally intense. Mahaprabhu's views about this are expressed perfectly in Shikshastika. Concerning Kamala Shraddha, Mahaprabhu said to Sanatin Goswami, if by good fortune a living entity develops faith in Krishna, he begins to associate with devotees. When one is encouraged in devotional service by the association of devotees, one becomes free from all unwanted contamination by following regulative principles and chanting and hearing. When one is freed from all unwanted contamination, he advances with firm faith. When firm faith in devotional service awakens a taste for hearing and chanting also awakens. After taste is awakened, a deep attachment arises. And from that attachment, the seed of love of Krishna grows in the heart. When that ecstatic emotional stage intensifies, it's called love of Godhead. Such love is life's ultimate goal and the reservoir of all pleasure. For a person with strong faith, the scriptural statements have no function. But for a person of weak faith, there is not alternative but the scripture and association of devotees. For this class of faithful person, initiation is necessary. From the authorized guru, a devotee receives the conclusions of the scriptures and the mantra and practices deity worship according to the instructions of the guru. In this way, he progresses. For this type of person, the Dasa Mula Shiksha, ten essential teachings, is important. One essential teaching is the authority or source of knowledge, that is, the scripture. The other nine essentials are conclusions stated by the authority of the scripture. 
The devotee with firm faith, by chanting the holy name with intrinsic faith, realizes spontaneously the nine essentials stated by the scriptures, by the mercy of the holy name. It's not necessary for him to digest the philosophical points raised in the scriptures. But those who have weak faith quickly fall from the devotional platform by bad association if they do not have the backing of scriptural authority. The Vedas, which discuss Brahman, are their source of knowledge. As the Vedas, being vast in scope, have many prescriptions for those interested in fruit of action and impersonal realization, instructions for the devotees is not easy to extract. In order to clearly show the real meaning which is revealed here and there in the Vedas, the Sattvika Puranas have been given. Among the Sattvika Puranas, the Srimad Bhagavatam is the best, most explicitly explaining the highest import of the Vedas. Thus the Bhagavatam and the Pancharatra scriptures, which confirm the same conclusions, are counted as authoritative knowledge. The Vedic literatures give information about the living entity's eternal relationship with Krishna, which is called Sambandha. The living entity's understanding of this relationship and acting accordingly is called Abhideya. Returning home back to Godhead as the ultimate goal of life is called Prayojana. Devotional service or sense activity for the satisfaction of the Lord is called Abhideya because it can develop one's original love of Godhead, which is the goal of life. The goal is the living entity's topmost interest in great wealth. Thus, one attains the platform of transcendental loving service unto the Lord. The relationship between the jiva, material nature, and God is called sambandha. Actually, Krishna is one, but he has two energies, material nature and the jiva. By a transformation of the material energy, the material world exists. And by transformation of the jiva shakti, the jivas exist. To again establish one's position as the servant of Krishna is called fixing one's relationship. In his original form, the Supreme Personality of God it is full of transcendental opulences which are free from the contamination of the material world. It is to be understood that in all Vedic literature, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the ultimate goal. The Vedic literatures give information about the living entity's eternal relationship with Krishna, which is called Sambandha. In considering the relationship, there are seven topics. Krishna, Krishna's energies, Rasa, Jiva, Jiva in the material realm, Jiva in the liberated state, and Achinta Beta Beta. By thoroughly understanding these seven topics of scripture, of scripture a person obtains Sambandha Gyan. By arrangement of sound is created a composition. The potency by which the meaning of sound is grasped is called the abhidha potency, or the sound, or the connotative power of the sound. By using the word ten with elephants, we can understand a certain number of elephants. The direct meaning is called abhidha. There is another potency of words called lakshana. In the phrase, cowherds on the Ganga, since cowards cannot stand on the surface of the Ganga's water, by the Lakshana Shakti we understand that the cowards are on the bank of the Ganga. Where it is necessary to use the Lakshana Shakti, the Abid Abidha Shakti does not operate. When the direct meaning can be used, only the Abidha Shakti functions.
In the Vedic literatures, the meaning taken by Abhidha, direct connotation, should be accepted. The direct meaning of the Vedas is called Abhideya, that which should be known. Going through all the Vedas, the Abhideya, the direct import, of the Vedas is devotion to the Supreme Lord. Karma, Jnana, and Yoga have only an indirect relation to the main purpose of the Vedas. Therefore, the main method indicated in the scriptures for attaining the Lord is sadhana bhakti. And this is the eighth topic. The means is directed towards a certain goal. This goal is called the prayojana. Krishna Prem, the perfection of the jiva, is the goal of bhakti. And the ninth topic discussed in the Vedas. In teaching Sanatan, Mahaprabhu said, I've described one relationship with Krishna in various ways. This is the subject matter of all the Vedas. Krishna is the center of all activities. Now I shall speak about the characteristics of devotional service by which one can attain the shelter of Krishna and his loving transcendental service. In this way, Mahaprabhu taught Jai Dharma, the constitutional nature of the soul, composed of Sambandha, Abhideya, and Prayojana. 1. As pouring water on the root of the tree energizes the trunk, branches, twigs, and everything else, and as supplying food to the stomach enlivens the senses and limbs of the body, simply worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead through devotional service automatically satisfies the demigods who are parts of that Supreme Personality. 2. If someone or other, if somehow or other, by good fortune, one develops faith in hearing and chanting my glories, such a person being neither very disgusted with nor de attached to material life, should achieve perfection through the path of loving devotion to me. Three, as long as one is not satiated by fruit of activity and has not awakened his taste for devotional service by Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, one has to act according to the regulative principles of the Vedic injunctions. Four, the Bhagavatam explains the meaning of Mahabharata and the Brahma Sutras. It is the natural commentary on the Gayatri Mantra and full of the import of the Vedas. It's composed in 18,000 verses. It is the essence of all the Vedas, histories, and the Vedanta. Satisfied with the nectarine taste of his work, one will have no attraction. Yeah. Satisfied with the nectarine taste of this work, one will have no attraction for anything else. And that is the end of chapter one, part two. And Jaya Hoist Prabhupada.